Yo, what up? It's me, KyoK, your fourth favorite healer, POV, YouTuber, maker thing. So, someone asked me to make a Astro POV for DSR and Dawn Trail. So, here you go. Astro got a pretty big rework in Dawn Trail, compared to the other healers at least, which basically all play the same. Uh, the new card system adds for some interesting things you can do. It made Astro and DSR a bit easier since now you're not weaving three cards for every two minute burst. You only have to do one melee and one range card and you're always going to know which one it is so you don't have to stare at your hop bar and figure out who you need to give cards to. Anyways, phase one, the Vault Knights. I said this last time, and I'll say it again. This phase doesn't count for your parse, so it doesn't really matter that much. As you're, as the region healer, you just need to make sure the party is full HP for every raid wide. And do the mechanics, your job is done. For the knockback chains, it's a good place to macro, but honestly, it doesn't matter. You can just replace it with more GCD healing. You'll be fine. One thing to keep in note is for the healer cleave to pop a little extra bit of mitt for yourself or your buddy healer since you don't have a tank LB for this one. Sage here did not mitt themselves so they died. Unlucky. And in the... You can honestly just keep spamming Helios over and over here to keep people full HP. Your team should meet the check on that part, unless half the people have Brink. Yeah, just keep everyone full HP the entire phase and you'll be good. So, I want to show my marker dance spots real quick, just for the people that are curious. I'm taking the standard PF region spots, which is group one. Um, so while the marker dance thing is playing, we talk about the card changes real quick. So redraw is on a 55 second cooldown, and in DSR the two minute bursts are sometimes delayed, such as the end of phase two and in P7. This means you can choose to either do your standard two minute burst, which is redrawing inside of the burst, or you can redraw on cooldown and you gain about one or two extra draws throughout the entire 20 minute fight. The downside is sometimes in two minute bursts you'll only have one damage card to give out. It's still a gain to redraw on cooldown, but it does take a lot more conscious effort. So if you want to just hold your cards for two minute bursts each time, that is perfectly understandable. But for the opener, it doesn't really matter where you put the star down. I put it at, down at 13, so it'll catch the two minute buffs. The only other relevant change that Dawn Trail Astro has in DSR is they have an extra light speed charge. Which is actually huge for Roth in particular. You now spam Aspect of Helios throughout the entire Roth, and you still have your Astro light speed charges for your two minutes at the start and end of P6. Honestly, it's such a it's not even a quality of life thing, it's just a flat buff to Astro's mobility. And you can use your flex light speed charge throughout the fight or wherever you want to do a little bit of extra movement. If you're doing the redrawing on cooldown, 
you do burn your melee card and your lord here because you'll be drawing in the middle of sanctity. So I'm using the standard NAR mid sheet, the NA ultimate rating. For those curious, it's not the absolute best opti, but it's good enough where party finder can clear with it, which is the main goal that I'm okay with. This is also full party finder strats for NA. And honestly, I think NA DSR strats are based. 611 is just better. So I put my star down in the middle of the meteor sequence because purely for damage. It's not going to catch the healing here. That's okay, because you don't need it for healing. So, as soon as phase 2 boss dies, you can use your temperance for the transition. Especially because we have a sage and not a scholar. Scholars sometimes spread those the transition and the uh, I say temperance, the neutral isn't required. Also, while you still have the neutral buff, you should reapply it. So the first stack will have a little bit extra shields. So for P3, you put down your star right where your when your numbers spawn on top of your head, and it'll pop right after the first stack and heal people up for the second. Standard P3, Astra is really good at giving the warrior a ton of extra mitigation and healing with their cards. So make sure you don't let the home gang warrior die when the home gang runs out. neutral as soon as P3 boss dies, then I pump a shield up for the bleed. Then I pot in P4 as a healer. One, because it's a gain into your lord cleaves. Your lord, your macro, and your star cleaves. And two, I think the eyes DPS check is harder than the P3 DPS check. Especially with there's Deaths and eyes. Having a little bit extra juice in P4 will make sure Cole does not die from damage. Nothing crazy. Use macro when your chain spawns and you go center. And it'll cleave the two eyes and it'll heal people up after the orb pops.
So rewind. Your main job is to keep the party full HP right before the final AoE. Also to keep Orchard Font alive. Whenever neutral comes up, you can mash it and heal as much as you want. DPS check here is fake, especially with a 2 minute burst. Right when the period of heart ends, that's your cue to keep Porsche Font full HP and the party. It's like your only job as a region healer in the entire fight. So don't fail it. At the end of transition, make sure to heal Harsh Font a little more, just so you can pad your healing log at the end. So, Wrath. Not really a heal check. The only person that takes a lot of damage is the Fire Puddle Baiter. And you just want to make sure everyone is topped up before the Protean slices. The people with the Fire Tethers at the start will take extra damage compared to everyone else. So look at your party list and make sure they're healed up. I got the big ring baits, so I'm chillin'. Can use the aspect of Helios before the AoE. And everyone is full HP. So for this two minute, if you've been card rushing, you should have your melee card and lord. You can dump your melee card here. But for your lord, I would recommend saving it for meteors. Partly because it's insane pad hitting like seven meteors with it. But also if you have deaths and off, like two people die because of a chain malfunction or something, Astro can actually do crazy recovery there and nuke all the meteors if they pot macro lord and star, it's big damage. And I have saved pulls like that where we've had two deaths and we still clear the meteors because of the crazy cleave that Astro has. Right here I run mid, I macro, I drop my lord, and then I early pop my star to catch as many meteors as I can. You can save your stars from the 2 minute burst before Doth. And you'll get the buffed star damage for meteors, but... That's just... your choice, really. If you have a Dark Knight, make sure they don't die in Living Dead. If they actually do require healing if the boss is dead and they're not allowed to hit the boss anymore. So keep an eye out for that. If you don't have a Dark Knight and your tanks are swapping, make sure that tanks are full HP and give them extra mitts so they survive the tank busters. So I accidentally fat finger my star recast here. Normally your star pops about right now and tops people up, but it's not the end of the world. As always, if you don't have OGCD heals, you can replace them with normal GCD heals. Astro is really good for these Aka Faw stacks because they have an extra 10% with CU. It adds leniency for people that might miss a rep or shield. Throughout the entire P6, keep an eye out on your tanks. Make sure they do not die to auto attacks. You should use extra GCDs, regions, OGCDs, whatever you do. Just keep an eye out on the tanks and make sure they don't die. 
Got downtime, Roth. You neutral here, pop a light speed, you can use your star. I actually run a little too far forward here. And eat a fireball cleave, which gives a huge damage down. Oops. But I actually noticed I was a little too far right when it happened, so I ED'd myself. It's okay to make mistakes. If you're good enough, you can recover from it properly. So this two minute is always pretty chaotic as a healer. You need to top everyone up. One for the worms with two damage and two for the cot damage. But at least you don't have to worry about the follow-up caught damage because of how OP macro is. Don't greed pyretic. And then macro should boost everyone's HP pretty sizably. So the P6 and Rage. I see a lot of tanks here die to bleeds because they don't receive any healing. If you love your tanks, keep them alive. P7 transition, it's nothing crazy. Just have regens running on everyone, and if you need more healing, use a normal Helios. After two bleeds for the final hit, you can use your single target mids such as CE and Exaltation on squishy members and hold down your CU and you'll be comfy. Star pops on nothing here. This time did a little bit. My bad. Doesn't actually matter. So the first set of towers. Three, three, two. This is your neutral sect, and I would also recommend using a light speed charge here just to make all your neutral sect recast instant. If you're safety gaming or progging, only spam aspect of Helios is there since the Aquamorn 1 is a pretty rough heal check. For the Giga Flares, you can save a light speed charge, which will make the healing check irrelevant since you can just spam Helios's for every hit. You don't have any light speed charges. Do your best to plan your star or your lady or your horoscopes to heal up for any damage that you feel is scary. Again, you have a flex light speed charge, you should use it pretty liberally. It does trivialize the entire Giga Flare healing sequence, which is nice. Second Dock Mourn, make sure the non invul tank doesn't die. In this case, it is the Warrior. Astro has crazy single target mid, and you should be using that on the tanks that need it. Don't underestimate. The damage in 611 on the party. It's still pretty rough if you don't cast any GCD healing, so don't greet it. Especially when your mana is fine.
Healer 1 takes the first auto after Giga Flare, followed by Healer 2 after the third set. This is a Planter Exaflare pattern. Maybe I'll make a DSR Exit Guide sometime. Third off more. Make sure the not emote tank doesn't die. So use exaltation, use your cards, use CE. And at the very end, make sure your home gang warrior or whoever invulm is healthy enough to take the autos. And GG's. How to clear Astro in Dawn Trail. Hopefully you found it useful in some way. Even though I took a damage down in Roth, still, I'll just say it was calculated because I ended up with a 69. Nice. If there's anything else you want to see, let me know and I will consider it. Thanks for watching and good luck out there for your Astro Clears.